In this video, we're going to talk about how all this stuff we've been working on, all module, all this logic and truth tables and Boolean algebra, can be used as the very basis of computation. In fact, we're going to create circuits using Boolean algebra. So this is a simple circuit. This is a, a very simple circuit. We've got a battery over here providing power and a light bulb over on this side. And the light bulb's going to turn on if it has power coming from both sides, right? And that's only going to happen if this switch is closed. So if the switch closes, then we have a circuit the light bulb will get power and it will turn on. So this is how a general circuit, a simple circuit works. And we can use this concept to take advantage of our Boolean algebra. So this is an AND circuit. Notice that both P and Q, both these circuits have to be shut, or both these switches have to be shut for this to be a circuit and the light bulb to turn on. And if even one of those is not closed, then our light bulb has no power. So we need both P and Q closed, and then we get light. So that's why this is an AND circuit. Another way of saying this is that we have our switches are in series, meaning one after the other. Here's an OR circuit. We have switches in parallel. And notice how this works. If just one of these switches is closed, let's say we close P, then we have a circuit. We've got power coming through P to the light bulb and background of the battery, which is a closed circuit, the light bulb turns on. Similarly, if we had uh, Q closed, and not P, the power can come around that way and we have a circuit. It doesn't hurt if both of them are closed. It doesn't really, isn't necessary, however. So this is an OR circuit. This is how we would create a logical OR, by having our switches in parallel. We have three gates that are commonly used. You can also, you can create a NOT uh, circuit as well. I'm not going to go into it. It's a little bit more... Uh, involved, but what we can do is we can package these circuits into these gates. So inside this AND gate is that circuit we saw before that has a sing uh, two switches that both have to be closed in order for the circuit to be complete. Right. And we package this into something called a gate. And notice that these gates each have their own shape. This NOT gate is a triangle with this little dot on the end. AND is um, nice and rounded on one side and flat on the other. And I like to think of the OR gate as looking kind of like a little spaceship. We could add some blasters out here. There we go. So, what we can do, in addition to the simple gates, we also have these multiple input gates. Um, these gates, I'm going to back up a moment. The gates work by taking the inputs, let's clean that off, by taking the input values and performing the expected action. So, in this case, if P and Q are both 1, for example, because we call, or I guess um, don't recall, we haven't talked about it, but with circuits, a true is equal, we represent it as a 1, and a false is represented as a 0. And so what we're saying is if P and Q are both true, then our AND gate is going to perform an AND operation, and R is going to be true as well. If 
only one of them is true and the other is false, our output's going to be zero. All right. So this is going to function just like the truth tables we saw previously and the Boolean variables and operations. So this is just a Boolean operation. Similarly, we can do multiple in input gates. So we can have many inputs all going into an AND. And what that does is it requires them to all be ANDed together. And similarly, there's a multiple input OR gate. So let's take a look at a circuit. Here's a picture of a circuit, a simple circuit. And a common thing that we want to do is evaluate it. So maybe we plug in starting values of 1, 0, 0, uh, which is true, false, false. And now what we can do is we can walk through the circuit and we can say, okay, this wire is a 1 or a 0. Well, that's going to be a 1. Uh, if we negate it with this NOT gate, this is going to be a zero. And here we have a zero. And so we, if we AND two zeros together, we're going to get a zero. So if, if our inputs are one, zero, zero, our output is going to be zero. Let's pick some different values. We could do zero, zero, one. Right. And if we have zero, zero, 1, let's erase this. If we have zero, zero, 1, then this OR has two zeros, which means it's going to be a 0, which is going to make the NOT a 1. And we're going to get a 1 and a 1 gives us a 1. So this is going to give us a positive value, a positive output. So let's try this again. In this case, if we do 1, 1, and I'm just kind of picking random values here. 1, 1, uh, or together is going to give a 1. And anded together is going to give a 1. Which 1 negated is going to be a 0, and 1 and 0 is 0. So what if we knew we wanted to have the output be on? So if I wanted the output to be on, I want that. We can work backwards. And I can say, well, if that's going to be a 1, then both of these need to be a 1. And if this wire is, this wire right here is a 1, then that means this one has to be a 0. And if this wire is a 1, and that means one of these two, or both, of P and Q are going to have to be 1. But since this wire down here is a 0, we know the other one has to be 0. So we can actually do that or that as our inputs. And we're going to get the appropriate values. Okay, we're going to do one more. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure this one out on your own. And then we'll go over it. Um, let's start with 1, 1. So see if you can figure out what the output will be with a 1, 1 input. Okay, well, here the 1 is going to be negated for this wire, so we're going to have a 0. And this AND has a 0 and a 1, so it's going to be a 0. And down here, let's look at this AND. And so this wire. Now this AND has P is 1 and Q is 1. So this is going to be a 1. Which means our OR is going to have a 1. And tracing around, we see that this line is right here. If we trace it around, we see it's a Q, which is a 1. So we're going to get a 1 as output. Try just one more. So we solve this and instead do one and zero. Give that one a try. Pause the video and give it a try. 
Okay. So if we negate this zero, we're going to have a one here, which means we have a one and a one. We're going to get a one over here. And then down below, P is one, but Q is zero. So this and right here is going to be a zero. But here we have one or zero gives us a one. And this Q is a zero. So we have one and zero and that's off. So this is called tracing through a circuit. And we're going to do more of this in later videos.